show is sponsored by Dice Throne, now playable with some of your favorite heroes from Marvel. Dice Throne is a fast and strategic game of card play and dice manipulation. It can be played 1v1 or with up to six players. Follow our custom link in the description to get your very own Marvel Dice Throne game. Hey, hey brother. brother! Ben, it has been a while since we have ranked all of our favorite Marvel movies. And you know what? At the rate that these come out, I think we're, we're certainly way overdue. There's a lot of additional things to include, but this go round I think is going to be a little bit more interactive and maybe just even a little bit different altogether. Maybe more fair. Yeah, More yeah. representative of our true feelings of each movie. The other thing that I like about it is that typical ranking, like, like things that we've done in the past have yeah. been like, this is my number one. What we have here is tiers. Tiers. And what that means is I think it gives us the ability to put things in like the top tier. And it's like, you don't even have to say like, this is my favorite one. It's just, in my opinion, a top tier Marvel movie. Exactly. And there's no limit to how many you can put in any one tier. Right, you could just have like, I like all of these a lot. Although if you put everything a lot, then you know, it'd be like, what's even the point of the rest? Just, and, uh, yeah, it's like yeah. Everyth everything top tier. Do you want to hear the tiers? Yeah. Our favorite movies will fall into the Marvelous tier. After that, we will have Loki, Awesome, then the Credible Hulk, Iron, Meh, and Thorable. Oh man, I know one movie that's going in Thorable. For those of you who would like to rank along with us or rank before we start and then watch the rest of the video, uh, we will leave a link to how we are doing this in the description down below. Yeah, it's pretty easy. Pretty much just click, drag, drop wherever you think the movie should fit. Yeah. What I like about this, this format before we get started is the fact that like, typically if we're starting with like our bottom five, it means that like, you're really waiting until the very end of the video to talk about your favorite things. Yeah. So this is a good opportunity for us because we're going to like start like Ant-Man and the Wasp, I yeah. think right here is on the bottom. So we're, we're just going to arbitrarily start with Ant-Man and the Wasp. I think it's in a little bit alphabetical order, but we'll oh. just see how they land as we go. I got you. Yeah. I got you. Okay. We can, we can, we can do some scribble bits. Okay. Sliding around. Okay. So that being said, Ant-Man and the Wasp. <sighs> All right. I well, when I think about Ant-Man and the Wasp, do I think it is Thorable? I don't, I don't know if I could quite put it in Thorable I, for yeah. me. Uh, I'm an Iron Meh. I think it's an Iron Meh. Like I saw it and it's, I think it's, it maybe gets that point because like it's important to see, to understand what's happening in Endgame. But like that, that both, that both I think in my mind contributes to this movie and also takes away from this movie because like on the, like the central plot, and this is something that Marvel I would say is usually fantastic about is making sure that every movie and in every like team up film, every single character has like an essential role to play. Yeah. Like in every, they've always been able to make things feel so important. Even if like you're focusing more on Tony or Steve or whatever, like every other character gets like their moment. And while I love Scott Lang and Paul Rudd as Scott Lang yeah. and Evangeline Lilly, yeah. um, the, the, it's like the plot of this movie is just so low stakes. It's so low stakes and it seems solvable enough if the bad guy was just like, my daughter's gonna die, could you help me out? Cause I feel like that's exactly what happens at the very end. And they're like, oh, well, why don't you just say so? Right, it's like, if you just said that we could have, like but gladly won, we're the good guys. Anyway, also quantum realm, that's gonna be time travel. See you in the next movie. Right. That's yeah. basically what they needed to establish. Yep. Anyway, yep. Um, let's go, let's go, let's go. Maybe, I don't know. Pick another, what's our next one? Okay, let's do, let's do, everybody loves Winter Soldier. So let's talk Winter Soldier for a second. Cause okay. this, for so many people, this is like regarded as the best movie, like the best Marvel movie. And I struggle with it. I, I it's not that I don't like this movie and I really love Steve, but I, 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 I remember when people told me that it received such high praise, I was like surprised by it. I, like it wasn't in keeping with what I expected. I do really like it, but I'm putting it under low key awesome. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Where okay. are you throwing it? I'm gonna. I'm gonna put it. You're gonna whoa to Credible Hulk. I'm going to the wow. Credible Hulk. Look at the you. Credible. I'm saying it. I'm saying it. Yeah. At SC Ben. I, SCB I, I ben. think you can at me as much as you'd like. I would actually love that. I. This why, is why what, do people say don't at me? Don't at. It's like. It's like Please, we should discuss things. Yeah. We should talk. 
I think for me, what I, I do remember about this movie was being genuinely surprised when I found out the Winter Soldier was Bucky, which I think was not a surprise for like 90% of Marvel fans who absolutely knew that was the case ahead of time. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah, and okay. I was just like, oh, what? No way. But it did make the first movie make a little more sense, but they had this big death scene, and I was like, oh man, I, don't, I didn't really care that much about Bucky last time. But oh, now sure. I get sure. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now he's back. I see what happened. Yep, okay. Yep, yep. Okay, okay. Uh, right. Let's see. Let's jump on now. Let's let's choose kind of a, like an interesting one with Doctor Strange. Doctor Strange. Okay. Doctor Strange is interesting to me. Doctor Strange is interesting. Um, I. Okay, I've got my spot. You got it? Or'd go, you throw it? I go Loki also. I put it in Incredible Hulk. Really? Just middle of the road. Okay. Yeah. Okay. See, I, I mean, I really like it. I like Doctor Strange. And my problem with Doctor Strange, my all of my experience with Doctor Strange leading up to seeing the movie was that he just seemed like too mystical and too like I didn't really understand the character. I had no way to like connect with him at all. Okay. And then I saw the movie and I was like, this is way better. This is the best version of it I've encountered and I like it and he seems relatable. But overall I wasn't like, I didn't leave the theater like that was the, that was the best movie I've ever seen. Well, and, and I would say, I would say that maybe it's also even a perception of like, how are you interpreting our tears that we've, that we've created yeah. here? Cause I would say that those movies I would reserve for my marvelous movies. Like the like walk out of the theater being yeah. like, what? Yeah. You know, so I'm not, it's not in there. It's, okay. in, it's in It's in one one slot above. Although it's good to disagree. It's good to disagree. Well, I've disagreed on the last two. True. We swapped them. Yeah. I like, I like. It um, seems like you would rather watch Doctor Strange. Like if we were to sit down and I was like, let's watch Doctor Strange. Uh, or you, I was like, let's watch Winter Soldier. You'd be like, how about Doctor Strange? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's I. I would stand by that. I would stand because I think that Doctor Strange is like a rather unique movie. Like it's it's still an origin story, and it's it's still sort of like the very arrogant character, sort of like finding some humanity and yeah, like that that is a pretty like tried and true yeah way to tell a story. Well, and let us just also state that what we're ranking here is our personal enjoyment of these movies. Oh yeah, not necessarily like they're critical acclaims or quality of film. It's like how I felt watching that movie and how badly I want to rewatch that movie. Yes, I in no in no way, shape or form do I think I am correctly placing these based on like Rotten Tomato scores. So oh, who yeah. cares? Yeah, not at all, not at not all. Not at all. Let's move on. Okay. Okay, let's do something recent with Black Widow. Black Widow. Oh man. I don't know if I'm gonna. I don't know if I'm gonna catch some oh, some heat for this where one. Where am I going here? But uh, I don't think it's definitely not up in my Marvel less. Mm, Mine's placed. Okay, Mine's I put placed. it. I did it. I I'm, put. Where'd you land it? I'm Iron Man. Oh, I put it up to Credible Hulk. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you you gave it a a, a skew chop. I, I still put it behind Doctor Strange. I thought that this movie felt unnecessary. Well, I guess it remains to be seen, it, right? Like, I think the point of it is to introduce Yelena. I definitely <clears throat> think the point of it is to, who Florence Pugh, I yeah, I love. And I think that she is gonna be a really, really, really fantastic addition to the lineup of characters that we have kind of going forward. But a lot of, like, a lot of this movie sort of suggested the idea that like Taskmaster was like this big villain, which ultimately wasn't really the case. And then the big villain is this guy who's like hanging out in the cloud city, and which is like just irritating to me because it's just like, that's not, that's not findable. Like that's not findable. It feels findable. It feels findable. Yeah. I think the whole idea that the, like the widows can't attack him because of this like pheromone idea is just a little bit like, Silly, especially well, like in the movie, they have sharpshooters like doing sniping stuff. Yeah, it seems it, it seems possible. Like unless he never leaves that room, ever. Right. I don't know. the The other thing for me with it was I just felt like the punches that were being thrown were so hard. It was like it, it felt extra violent. I felt like it maybe, and these are superhero movies, mind you. Like where it's like I know that we're talking about like a man who made a suit like out of not actual iron, but you know, whatever it's called yeah. iron and fluid yeah. and such. And it's like, and for some reason, this was still the one where I was like, I think you wouldn't have been able to stand up from that fall. It like, <laughs> do you, you mean when she falls from almost space? 
That's one of them. Okay. That's one of them. I think to me, it was like, it felt very much like they were trying to, like no one in this movie has superpower. Well, not no one, but the, most of the characters don't have superpowers. So we will compensate by like adding in extra oomph and like pow, like, oh, look how hard they were hit and they don't even have powers. That's how strong these people are. Yeah. Yeah. But then it's just sort of like when, the, and that, that's sort of what I compared it to. Like when Steve and Bucky are fighting in Winter Soldier and they're like throwing each other into eye beams and stuff, you were like, holy cow, like that super like soldier serum right now is like, you're seeing it, you know? So, yeah. Cause they, they still, they're not like in suits. They don't like transform into something. They're not using like, like, like blasty type of guns or anything like that. Mm -hmm. And so it's a good demonstration at, at that point of like what the super soldier serum represents. But then if you just have Natasha also fall from space or also fall out of a helicopter and like land on a fire escape yeah. You know, that more is going to happen to you. Yeah, like she should be more hurt. You'd be more hurt. <laughs> I mean, she gets fairly beat up, but it does feel like she'd be more definitely incapacitated. Yeah. And otherwise, yeah, I just don't really know. Like having it take place prior to the events of everything else, it just, it put it in a, because it's before Infinity War. Well, we, I mean, where did she get that vest though? Yeah. That's the payoff. Now we know. That's the payoff we all <laughs> wanted. All right, moving on. Okay, moving on. You all pick right. one. You I'll pick, pick one. one. Let's do Black Panther. Oh, I know where this goes. I know where this goes. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Black Panther is one of my favorite Marvel Absolutely. movies. Absolutely. This is my first. So this is my first one of the Marvel list here. Same. Yeah. Same. This was one where I, um, I did not expect how much I was going to love it and loved it. Well, and so, I, yeah, the same thing. It was like going in with Black Panther. It's like uh, my my relationship with Black Panther and Doctor Strange prior to seeing the movies is about the same. It's like, I know you exist as Marvel characters. There, is there, about it. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> and if you're not paying attention to the MCU, there was, there was a whole era of films that came out with Doctor Strange, with Black Panther, with the Guardians of the Galaxy, where you were like, okay, Marvel, you like, How's the bottom of that barrel looking? Like, you know, and that's not the case even like in the comics or anything. This is me just not having grown up with the comics and not knowing all of these characters so well. Black Panther's a big deal in the comics. Yes. Um, but as as at that point in my my Marvel MCU career being a little bit more um new to the the space, mm -hmm. I was very surprised. But the thing I really, really, really liked about Black Panther was the way that they were able to like really get you to understand the culture of the people and the way that everything worked and by just like showing you by just showing you yeah. yeah like like having like the rituals and the fact that like there is this sort of super soldier serum-esque element to whoever ultimately becomes the black panther right but also like they have that trial where any of the other tribes can set forth someone right to like fight to have that position. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like you're, you're also breaking down the idea of like monarchy a little bit. It was interesting because like they have the whole ritual and stuff, but like for the most part, you can tell they, they have this big ceremony as like, as mostly uh, part of tradition as like a sure. formality. Yes. Like no one ever actually comes up and challenges the the reigning king, but then like someone does and you're like, and they actually go with it. And you're like, oh, okay, that's how these people treat the tradition. It's like, that's great. I, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah. it's like they're willing to respect that. Yeah. And, and I love that. Like, I thought that was really cool. Um, also Killmonger is yeah, just a good, good villain. villain. Um, I hope he somehow comes back. Oh, so. me too. I was like, I couldn't believe they killed him because he had such like a good little arc going on there. He did. He yeah. did. I, I can't believe I'm blanking on the actor's name right now. Michael B. Jordan. Michael B. Jordan. Okay. Yeah. How did I forget Michael Jordan? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Michael B. Jordan is great. <clears throat> I, I like him. So anyway, uh, that one, that one I agree with. Okay. What's next here on our, on our list? All right. Let's go from the very bottom here okay. and go Thor Dark World. Where are you putting it? Well, I think it goes without saying that it is. Yeah, <laughs> I think this isn't even a hot take at all. I don't I don't know anyone whose favorite Marvel movie is Thor 2. The thing that I would say about Dark World is that I think it is an underrated movie because I think everybody has also like collectively decided that we don't like it. Right. Which probably means that like the general viewpoint towards this movie 
is, I would say on average lower than it ne strictly needs to be. Sure, it would be, I, here's the thing. I have maybe watched it all the way through once and I think I fell asleep and I tried to watch it again and I fell asleep and I was like, okay, this is just not happening. That's, but that, that speaks volumes. I know. Like, like I will tell you, and I'll bring this argument back up later, <clears throat> but there's that theater going experience where like, if you walk out of the theater and you are just jazzed about the movie you just saw, then it's like, it doesn't matter if it's critically good. It doesn't matter if the story made sense. It doesn't matter if the plot is good. It's like, you like if it. you enjoyed it, that That's is all enough. that matters. It's good enough. Um, and I think that, that this is sort of the, the antithesis to that idea, which is, if you couldn't get through the movie when trying to get through the movie, then it's like one way or another, it's not even you being critical of it. It's just, it didn't engage it, you exactly. enough to capture your attention. I remember we went to go pull clips from it one day for a video. Cause like I knew stuff had happened in this movie and I was just like scrolling through it. And I was just like, I don't remember any of this. So who knows now seeing where Thor's character has come uh, in the many years since Dark World came out, maybe it has aged better and it'll be like, oh, look, look, and you can appreciate the character more, but I haven't gone back to it in a long time. And I never think like, yeah, I wanna watch it. Well, this is this is like, you have red matter, I think in this, which ends up being an infinity stone. That's the reality stone. The reality stone. The aether. Yeah, the aether. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fun stuff. More red sludge. Yeah. Okay. 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 Let's <coughs> let's hop here to Spider Man Far From Home. Spider Man Far From Home. Let's see. Do I have the right one? No, this let's is see. coming. Let's see. Let's see. Jum, 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 jum. Boom. I did it. You did it? You placed yeah, it? I placed it. Oh, oh I struggle. I struggle with it. Okay. How'd you do? I put it in Loki also. I put it in Marvelous. No way. Top tier Marvel oh, movie. Oh, very interesting. Cause I was literally, I was like- Oh, you fence. were on the line between- I was not like between Incredible Hulk and Loki awesome. No, this um, one is like, you get to see Peter like enter God mode at the end when he's like fighting the drones and Mysterio on the bridge. And man, I just love the Mysterio villain a lot. I love like all the special effects stuff and how he's like mostly fighting him with mind games rather than physical violence, but also he can be quite physical, like physically dangerous with all he's capable of. And uh, I love, I, I'm, I just like, I like the scene that like, it's like, it really feels like they're thrusting Peter into like the spotlight into like a real leadership role. And I, I do think that that's fair. And I, I, cause I think a lot of this movie was sort of, uh, it's you're watching Peter kind of go through that Tony Stark isn't here anymore era. Yeah. And like the struggles that he has with the fact that like, that was the person that he like, you know, looked up to and it's sort of been like his mentor in this world. Mm -hmm. And so it, it, I think that there's something very like personal even about that thought of like how Mysterio, at least at first is, is like, you can see how hard like Peter is even just like looking like I need someone to fill that role again. Yeah. And like maybe Mysterio can, can be that person. And yeah. then like even just the the disappointment and then the overcoming of that to, yeah, like you said, sort of go into God mode at the end. And I would say the other thing that this movie really introduces is, is the classic Peter Parker problem, which is how does he balance his life as Peter Parker with how he balances his life as Spider-Man. Right. Which is, uh, for always with the Spider-Man character, it's it's always the struggle. It's like, how, how do I do both? How do you do both? Yeah. How do you get to be with MJ, but also go and fight crime at night? Right. Like, how do you keep them safe? And, yeah, if and people also, know your identity. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so I, I think being able to step, to step into that frame is really cool. Um, and I really love the one battle where think they're at like a parking garage or something or like right, gets old... it by the train yes yes yeah all of a sudden it's like oh that one was real <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> and then he heads up in the netherlands <laughs> yeah that, that's pretty good that's pretty good i feel like um, you're talking yourself into marvelous man i don't know i would say that i talked myself very firmly into loki also. okay all right all but right. i also i will the other thing i'll say a couple other things two small things is i like peter and happy's relationship developing yeah because that's pretty funny because happy's pretty much shrugged him yeah. the whole time. The other, I swear though, I, this is why I think it's going. I think it would be extremely cool to watch Peter grow up and 
sort of like step into a Tony Stark position. It's a thousand percent what they're trying to set you up for because at one point in the movie, he's literally wearing a suit built by Iron Man and that he just assigned with Iron Man, with, you know, Tony's technology. And then he like picks up a shield and is holding like a hammer. He's like doing all three things at once. Yeah. And you're like, yeah, yeah, I see what you're doing. Yeah, <laughs> you I set love this it. up. And I that's like, it. this is like the epilogue of the Infinity Saga too. So it's like, yeah, here's how we're ending things. Let's go to phase four. Right, yeah, we, did, we, 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 we actually killed a character. It was Iron Man. You wanna know who the new one is? This guy. All right, Ben, let's do Avengers 1. Let's dip into the Avengers. Okay. Into the Avengers movies. Okay, okay. All right. Actually, where is it? It's funny, it's over here. Um, so. Mm-hmm. Oh, dear. I feel like we're going to argue again. Oh, do you think so? Where are you putting Avengers 1? I'm like, right again. Oh, I'm, man, right on, the, right on the edge. I'm right on the edge. I'm right on the edge. And I'm like... I'm more, I, I think part of my brain is worried about filling in one category too much. No, don't worry about that. Okay, don't worry about that. It be as full as it needs to be. Okay, I'm gonna put in Loki Awesome. I did too. Okay, okay. I think it's very cool. I think that like, there's so much very like, classic superhero movie stuff about this movie that is done exceptionally well. Yeah. Uh, like you've got like the, we, we always call it, we use the same clip in this office so many times. I'm surprised I, shot. I can't remember like the specific time code. Oh, I know. I'm gonna go with two <coughs> hours, 13 minutes. I, I don't even know if it's that long. Riley, whatever two hours, 13 minutes is in Avengers, just play those five seconds. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Either way <laughs> though, there's the money shot where you're like seeing them all come together. It's an incredible moment. Um, and the, one of the other moments I really like is there is when Steve is kind of demonstrating his power of leadership. Yeah. Is, yes. Is really neat. Cause it's I love like, that scene. Yeah. It's like, you're in the middle of this giant alien attacking New York City battle. Like, right, like nothing like this has ever happened. You have a bunch of superheroes. This has never happened. And Steve just like, I got it. Here's what we do. Smash. Go. Right, yeah, yeah. Just tells like, everyone what to do. It's really neat. Yeah. It's really neat. And like, it's like, it's very difficult to demonstrate leadership as a superpower. And I feel like they do a good job several times in the battle of having Steve do that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Sort of step into that role. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise, yeah, just I, I think it's it's the first time that Marvel did a great job of being able to tell a lot of different stories at once. Very well. I mean, and it was just like when it came out, it was like the first taste of like what's to come. Sure. It was like this is what they've been building. Where it's like you've seen all uh, those. We know all these take place in the same universe, and now they're all going to collide. And it's like, how's it going to go? And the answer was awesome. It's true. Yeah, it's true. It's right. good. It's good. It's good. Okay. Okay. If we're going to do that, then let me switch gears to not switch gears. Stay in the same gear to Ultron: Age of Ultron. And as long as we're going to do an Avenger movie, because I do know where this one sits for me. Okay, let's see. Age of Ultron. Uh, 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 yeah, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. Okay, we're doing yeah. it. I put it in Loki Awesome as well. You didn't. I did. You didn't. Yep. Where'd you put it? I put it in the Incredible Hulk. You put it in Incredible I, Hulk. I think I think Ultron is the least good Avengers movie. Well, I agree with that. Okay. Yeah. So that means you're gonna have all of them. Wow. Yeah, that's right. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> wow. I like the Avengers movies. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> Hot take. <laughs> I like the I Avengers know, movies. I, I like the Avengers movies. The Avengers big team up ones so, are really cool. It's like, this is not a controversial opinion. Yes, where Civil War is going, Ben. <laughs> Civil War is amazing. Yeah, I know. Because <laughs> it's another Avengers movie. I think Ultron, uh, I think I always sort of get ho hooked up on, uh, like, not really super understanding the difference between Vision and Ultron. Interesting. Like, like it's like, oh no, we put all this technology into this thing and it made Ultron and he's gonna take over the world. Oh no, we put the exact same things into a, a thing and it made Vision, who is good. No, but they have Thor's lightning and Vision, so. I don't think that that makes a that's difference. That's all uh, the difference that's, that's you need. Basic right echoltricity. Mm -hmm. I don't Not think. Not God echoltricity, Ben. <laughs> I think I also feel like uh, the the Romanovs' <laughs> inclusion in this is like it's good because they're included and they're there. And there's like you get like a couple of big like Scarlet Witch moments, which they love to do, mm -hmm. and it's like just show you just how powerful <laughs> yeah, Scarlet. Like, oh yeah. They, Look they how far had, they've come. They had to take Scarlet Witch and like they were like how do we not make her like unbelievable? 
right away. Right. And so like the the ramp up on her, um, I don't think that I was really all of that connected to Pietro though. And I feel like his death was supposed to be like more impactful. Mm -hmm. and you I didn't get very time, you didn't get much time to get to know him. You didn't get much time to get yeah. to know him. Um, but I love James Spader as Ultron. James Spader as Ultron is great. It's fun. He's a good voice. Yeah. He's a very good voice. I, do I mean, I like that you get a little bit of background on all the Avengers. I love that when you like, you start this movie, everyone's just already like, we're together, we're a team, we're the Avengers, we're doing the thing. I, I have to say though, that the opening sequence, the money shot from Ultron. Oh, it's real corny. It's pretty cheesy. It's, pretty, it's cheese. It's like, it, it, was, it yeah. was cheesy in the first Avengers movie, but in the exact right way. Yeah. The second one, it was kind of like, Okay. <laughs> yeah, all right. Yeah, in the first five minutes too. Okay, guys. Yep. You yep, say so. Yep. Yep. Okay. I'll give you that. Okay. All right. I you... would still, if you were like, would you rather like sit down and watch Ultron or like Doctor Strange? I'd probably rather watch Ultron. Okay. There you go. That's where I stand. Wow. Yep. Okay. All right. All right. Let's see. Let's do something, something different. Hmm. <laughs> Guardians. Guardi oh, Guardians. now this one, now I'm having trouble then. Guardians now I'm having of trouble. the old Where galaxy. Go with it. Mm -hmm. I'm doing it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Where are you? I put it in Marvelous. I knew you would. Yeah. I knew you would. Yeah. Your like wedding soundtrack <laughs> yeah. was the I, Guardians of the that, Galaxy I did, soundtrack. So it, it might not make it there for me, except that when Beth and I got engaged and like bought our first house together, we were like, painting the living room. It was like our first home project ever. And I didn't have many songs on my phone, but we had seen Guardians of the Galaxy together and I had downloaded the soundtrack because everyone did, because it's awesome. It and we good. basically listened to it on repeat for like five days while we like painted the house. And then when we actually got to the wedding, it was like a huge part of the wedding soundtrack. So I do have a specific connection with this movie. I think that that is great. Yeah, I really do. And, and again, it goes, I would I would compare it again to that theater going experience. It's like you having a personal relationship with it, regardless of the reason counts. Oh yeah. And so it's like, yeah, don't let anybody trick you into it. It's like, if you love it because you went on your first date to see that movie with your now spouse or any other person, count it. Where'd you put it? I put it at Loki also. Okay. I think that it's really, really, really good. Um, and I pretty much love watching this movie. Yeah. Um, I would say that like maybe, um, this is a good way to describe it. What is the villain's name again? Oh, Ronan. Ronan. Yeah. Ronan the accuser. Yeah. 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 I think that that's probably where I'm at with it is like, it's like they did a good job of taking characters you've never heard of before. They made the collector interesting. Mm -hmm. Like so many things really well done, but then it's like, and then there's this other guy. Yeah, it's like the point of the movie is very much the five of them becoming a team. Yes. And like also we needed a villain for them to defeat. And you got a little bit more Thanos background. You get a little bit more is, of that. You know, which is important because he's like a big deal later. He's a big deal. He's yeah. a big deal. It's gonna so. be it's gonna be hard to beat out having Thanos be the underlying villain. Okay, let's jump more present, Jay. Okay. Shang-Chi. Shang-Chi! Okay. All right, okay. All right, all right. Yep. Yeah. You were quick with that. I think you I I think I got I think I could put it, it right there. I think I would do it. Yeah. Where'd you throw it? I think I'm gonna make you mad. You I think, think I'm so. Make a lot of people mad. No. I put it incredible. You put in just credible. I put it in Loki. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I. I and feel I put like it you above Ultron. Oh, I'm not. I'm not oh, doing any okay. shiftiness inside of those. So if if anybody's following me on that, then uh, that's not intentional. I have been surprised generally at the very favor favorable reaction to Shang Chi. I thought it was good. Yeah. But. I wasn't, I, I don't know if I was like blown away by it. Okay. I didn't really feel like, I felt like what we were seeing is the forerunner to when the 10 rings are extremely interesting. I think they, yeah, it, I think they did the same thing with the 10 rings that they had to do with Wanda in Ultron, where it's just like these, this item is outrageous powerful, but like right now, we can't we can't go full power because we have a lot of movies left to do. Yeah. So we have to find a way to like rein it in to make them look impressive for what they are. But mostly they're just gonna kind of like throw them at each other. 
Yeah, but yeah. it's going to be way bigger than that at some point. But I thought, I don't know, I really love the relationship between um, Shang-Chi and Aquafina. Yeah, I can't even remember her name in the movie. It, everyone would just call her Aquafina, right? Yeah, the, the, yeah. you're good. Exactly you're good. Right. You know who you're talking about. <laughs> you know who we're talking yeah. about. I love. I love that they just had this like um, mostly just like male female best friendship going on. It was. That it was, was very a, fun. A very well done like just platonic relationship. Yeah. Where it's just like you can just tell and and that I think is kind of rare. Um, although I would say Hawkeye and Black Widow are a good another good example of it in Agreed. the MCU. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I, I felt like I didn't, I, I think one thing that really bothered me was the arrow that like got shot through the dragon. Oh, that was like yeah. the total game changer. And it's <laughs> and just they, like- They're a little self-aware about it, but it's still a little like, eh, It's like, know. that was a big, there's other like, ways yeah. to have done it. Yeah. And like, I think that they, I, and I'm not, I don't even have a problem with it being that, but the other thing they could have done like was was maybe alluded to archery being something that this character might have or possibly ever would like to do. Well, they, they make a lot of allusions to like her trying stuff and just like quitting stuff before she gets good. And so like, I think this is like, oh, I tried something and I stuck with it. But it's like, you stuck with it, but you were only there for three days. So like all you needed to be there was for like, maybe like 30 days and I could have given you that shot, you know? <laughs> yes, yes. Um, but. Or or even if it was the type of thing where you had seen her like miss and miss and miss and miss and then kind of in keeping with the character's like haphazard, slightly clumsy <clears throat> nature, bullseye it when, right. when when she needed to. And even then it could have just been like, ah! Like That's she, true. She kept missing. And then when and it counted, then. when it counted. And then and even then when you hail back to it, it's sort of like, you missed a lot of targets. Right. It's like, like I don't want to count. Yeah. It's like, that could like, have been funny. Yeah. But the, that, I don't know, the whole movie didn't hinge on, doesn't hinge on the arrow scene for me. There was so many moments in the movie where like the choreography and the fights were like just so creative. Like when they do like the shadow box fight. That, that was, was amazing. so cool. Like, I, I got chills during that fight while watching it. There is a scene in Infinity War when uh, Tony goes to stab Thanos and he like breaks off the knife and then stabs him. Yeah. Where every time I watch it, I literally go, Ugh! like I could like feel it. <laughs> like yes. hitting me. Like, I feel like this Shang-Chi created that moment like five or six times throughout the movie where I could like, f like the what they choreographed like made me like feel the action in real life. That's good. So that's, I was like, that's that was really good. good. That is good. Yeah, that, and that scene is awesome. Although again, I would say he's like fighting this character with like- Oh yeah, the mask. The mask, mm -hmm. who it's like, they could have had the person in the mask like be someone. Sure, or that even, character didn't get a big payoff. It, there was no payoff. No, I agree with that. That could have been a little better. So that was that was kind of odd. Okay. okay, all right, all right, all right. Let's try Captain Marvel. Oh boy, Captain okay. Marvel, I'm going, okay. okay. Okay, okay. I feel like, hmm, mm -hmm. I'm going there. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you ready? Yeah. Boom. I put it in The Credible Hulk. I also put it in The did Credible you? Hulk. I did. I think that when this movie came out, I maybe gave it extraordinarily high praise. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, Video Editor Riley talks about this phenomenon a lot, but it's like, this is one where I think I was sort of caught up in the excitement about being excited about Marvel movies because this came out about two months before um, before End, Endgame. Before Endgame. And yeah. we had been spending the past year speculating harder on what was gonna happen in Endgame than maybe any other like one movie we've ever tackled. So I right. think that my enthusiasm for Marvel was at its peak. For sure. And I, and I gave it maybe in accordance praise that was more about my general sense of excitement. Yeah. At that time. I think that's fair. And I mean, it's. I think it was, this was the first Marvel movie that had like a female lead, right? Yes. I think so. I think that was, I think that was done really well. And I think um, Brie Larson was really, is really good as Carol Danvers. Yes, I agree with that. And, and I, want, I like Brie Larson. It's like, I do really like this movie, but like, it's interesting, like putting it in this context where I'm like, what, like how much, if you put, if you put like a selection of movies in front of me, how many other movies would I rather watch first? So, and, and now you can see. Now you this can is, see. This is where I'm at. Now you can see. My bell curve is actually like coming out pretty nice. Oh, you're here. right. That's that. interesting. That, Mine's that like uh, averaging a little higher than yours. Okay. Well, I mean, you're more of a child at heart. I'm way yeah. more of a cynic yeah. in general. 
<laughs> oh, I said no one ever. Okay. Oh gosh. Um. Well, yeah, I feel like there was another thought that I had about Carol. I think one thing about her is that she does go from medium mode to God mode at the end very, very fast. That's true. Um, and it's it's really cool. Like when she comes up into space and you've got like that shot and it's like, that's a good, it's cool it's moment. It's interesting to see how they have to put like the, like the restraints on the characters when they do this. Cause you're right. Like with the 10 rings and Wanda, they were like, we're just gonna like, they are really powerful, but we're gonna put like, like mental like blocks on them or like they're not gonna have good control over their powers. They're not gonna understand them fully just yet. Meanwhile, they're like, okay, Carol, we were just like, okay, immediate uh, from like two to 10, just like that, basic God mode. Now we gotta like, we gotta like just put her really far away from Earth. And, and that most is, of the time. That is what Marvel does with Captain Marvel. Always. Yeah. It's sort of like, where is she? She's off doing things in other parts of the galaxy. The ga space is big. Space and it's is like, big. It's like, yeah, but where? Why are none of the other Avengers there? And it's like, because she's so powerful, she can do it on her own. And it's like, oh, fine. Right. And it's like, like I, I get like, Captain Marvel has got to be up there with like the most powerful Avengers. Oh yeah. Uh, hard stop. And so it's, it is interesting to see what they're going to have to struggle with. It's, it's the Superman problem. Over yeah, again, it's like the, be the best way to make a Superman movie interesting is to make him make a choice. Yeah. And it's like, it's like that, you know, cause he can do anything, he can survive anything. Right. You know, and it's like Captain Marvel's the same way. Everyone's always like, oh, kryptonite, that's his weakness. It's like, people get kryptonite and they use it against him and he still wins. So it's like, is it? Is it? Yeah. Is it? And we're, Not so yeah. much, I don't think. Okay, okay. Um, I need, I want to just take this off the board just so that we don't have to like really spend time on it, but the Incredible Hulk movie. Okay. Um, I think that that one just pretty much goes right there. I'm going right down to Thorable. I don't, I don't want to feel like I need to spend time on it. Yeah, I, I've seen it like uh, once in earnest and that I was like, yeah, okay. That was, there he is. It's not really a hot take. If you, if you, it, like if you missed the Incredible Hulk, it's and you just saw Mark Ruffalo show up in Avengers as like, oh yeah, didn't you know there was the guy who was the Hulk just hiding out? I'd be like, yeah, this is them introducing the Hulk. <laughs> that, like, that's this a fine is them intro. introducing him, this is fine. The thing I will give to it is that if you were to have given me a casting call between Ed Norton and Mark Ruffalo to play the Incredible Hulk, I would have picked Ed Norton probably 10 times over. Yeah. Like to begin with, but like Mark Ruffalo is just, he's Crushing so it. like, he so has that sort of like soft, <clears throat> quiet, like sort of um, cautious in the way that he like communicates that is so befitting. Like Bruce, Bruce Banner. Banner. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. Anyway, um, on, okay, let's go, let's go to the start. Iron Man. Iron the Man. The original. Marvelous. I put it in Loki awesome. Wow. Yeah. How could you? How could, I know. We watched this movie a lot growing up, for this, sure. Because this was the start of the MCU. It was like, this is like one of the best superhero movies that's ever been made. And at the time, it probably, uh, that's, that was very true. Since then, they've made a crap ton more. So I, I think they've done better sometimes. I love this movie. I mean, I love it too. I I would watch it gladly. I love I love the whole scene uh, where he's where he's like being held captive. He's building the first suit, you know, and he sort of like fights his way out. It was it was also very topical at the time, just like with world events that were going on. Um, and I don't know. I just think it's like it's it's cool to see this character go from from again. It's like the Doctor Strange like arc. It's like from just sheer arrogance and right. rich playboy mentality to like becoming human, to becoming humble, to doing the right thing, to making the right choices. Right. Um, the only thing I would say is that I love probably the first three acts of this movie more than the fourth act. Mm -hmm. um, I don't really ever, whenever I think about what I love about this movie, it's usually not the fight with- um, Ironmonger. Ironmonger. Yeah. I would say that was part of my thing with Black Widow jumping way back. Like the first two acts I thought were like really, really strong. And then they got to the end, like at the floating city thing. And it was just like, I feel like it was like a real dive. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. Pun intended. I, ah, <laughs> fell from space, totally yeah. survived. Okay, okay. I stand by it though, but that's been the case for me. I, I think Iron Man has been one of my tops forever. So, um, okay, what do you wanna do next? Let's go. Uh, the beginning, if you're gonna do the start of Iron Man, let's go to the start of Cap with just first Avenger. Okay, okay, okay. Let me make sure I got the right, yeah, okay. Ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. 
Where to throw it? Loki, awesome. Oh, okay, I put an Incredible Hulk. I think I just like this movie. I mean, I again, it's not like I don't like it. I love the moment where he's like in training camp in the beginning, and he's this like scraggly little soldier, and they're, they're like, first one to get the flag gets to ride back on the cart, and like he goes and like pulls the pin. Like I love all the very like simple things that he's doing, or they're like they toss the grenade out, and he's like the first one to like yeah, jump on jumps it. Jumps on it. Like, I think the way that they demonstrated Steve's purity pretty much the whole time is really great. Yeah. Like, I I like how even, even like, his struggles, if you were to go to, like, Winter Soldier with it, with, like, knowing that he has to do the right thing, but that means, like, fighting his best friend. Right. It's like, it's like, and then eventually being like, I can't. Like, I can't, yeah, he can't do it. I can't fight you. Um, it's just like, I, I just, I really, I really love Cap as a character. And I, I thought that it was cool because, uh, like with the, with the ending basically where like you get that sense of disappointment. Like it's sort of the infinity war ending where like him and Peggy don't get that dance. Right. You know, when he like crashes in for a ice. very long time, for a very long time. Yeah. Uh, and like, you know, you're talking about like 10 years for a payout right. on, on that particular on that moment. moment. Yeah. Um, which I thought built up really nicely. Red Skull is um, like fine as like a as like an enemy. Yeah, it's surprising they haven't really. I mean, he sort of comes back in Infinity War. I know he's like one of like the really really big bads in the Marvel and like the like the comics. Yeah, he's like Captain America is like number one like arch nemesis or whatever. So he's been MIA for quite a while now. Yeah, yeah. But. My my suspicion is that as they bring villains forward we're gonna see a lot more like maybe like ethical type of choices to be made yeah. rather than like you know hulk smash right type of stuff there was a lot of that in the in like uh the infinity saga I, right which is, which is fine you know but i think that in order to keep things like i i've said it before but what is fascinating to me is how boring action can get and mm -hmm. how quickly Kind of like this conversation, apparently. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> holding it a yawn. Yeah, here <laughs> Jeez. Goes. Wrap it up, man. Okay, okay, okay. So that being said, let's go to Thor Ragnarok. Thor Ragnarok. Boom. Boom. Yeah. I didn't do it justice the first time around. I wanted to do this video just so I could make reparations on how I feel about Thor Ragnarok. Yeah. Where, where do you have it? I have it in Marvelous. Yeah. It's yeah. In, it's it's in so good. It's, it's so funny. It is so spectacular. Yeah. I think. The first time that I saw Ragnarok, and this is this is a case where I'll go back on everything entirely and be like, I felt like they were leaning way too hard on the humor. I didn't really get like the whole um, uh, like Jeff Goldblum thing. I felt like a lot of it just felt like you know the he's a friend from work, but like of like over and over and over again. And now I'm like, nah, it's just good. Nah, it's just good. It's just good. It's, it's super so fun. I like Hela as a villain. And like, this is one of those things, like there are certain movies when we're like pulling clips for videos and stuff, like once you open them, it's almost a bad move because like, I'll just get stuck watching clips from the movie. Yes. And it happens a lot, but like when he like jumps down to the bridge at the beginning, like, and he like fully goes like, God of Thunder. Yeah. Like it's such a cool scene. And it, like I love all of the I love the fireworks coming up out of nowhere for Valkyrie. Yes. And she yes. has this like <laughs> absolute swagger about her. It's like it's like, like why? Why are there why? fireworks? But why are like, there fireworks? I am more okay with those fireworks than I am Natasha <laughs> falling out of a helicopter no, I agree. onto scaffolding. I agree. Yeah. Like it's like th th where did that come from? Who cares? It doesn't matter. Who cares? <laughs> and you got like that, like um Carl Urban, is that his name? Yeah. You know, with like, behold. My stuff. My stuff. And then he has a redemption arc that's good. Yeah. Like, it's a, it's like a good moment where He's you're like, like fighting with machine guns on Asgard and yeah. it's like totally working. Yes, yeah. yes. It's pretty great. But again, yeah. Asgard blows up at the end. Yeah. And it's like, maybe that's just what I like. Maybe I like when- You like, like when the villains get a victory? Maybe not get like a victory, but like when it's not, the ending of the movie just isn't all like funky happily dirty. ever after. Which brings me to Infinity War. Oh, boom, boom. My bell curve is, is is starting to skew. Where you at? I put it in marvelous. Yeah, yeah. 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 Infinity War is amazing. Yeah. In it's, again, it's like start pulling clips from this. It's like I'm just gonna get sucked into watching everything. Like Thor arriving in Wakanda. Doesn't make any sense how he knew how to get there and how he saw through the force field, whatever, doesn't matter. I 
What I love about it is even, I love the whole need of a Lear situation where he goes yeah. and he makes Stormbreaker and like Groot, you know, takes his, like takes That's the arm, arm to like make it like the handle of it. Mm -hmm. uh, I love Eitri and how, like as you're watching it, it's sort of like you trust so quickly that Eitri has been there for so long that he just knows. And so like his layer of shock at like what Thor is doing yeah. to me is so credible. Right. I'm just like, I'm like, Oh man. If Eitri's impressed. Oh, right. Then it's like, yeah. <coughs> it's like, that's. <laughs> it's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty good. So I love that this is just like, they have so many characters in this movie and that they have to like bounce around and like keep everything cohesive and like make the, all the plots run together. And they have all these different groups. And Thanos is sort of like the one who's jumping from group to group as he collects all the stones. Yeah. And it just feels so cohesive the whole time. And also this is a weird one where Thanos gets the most screen time of any character. Yeah. Which is really cool. And I think that's part of what makes it so good. Cause like you get to spend a lot of time with the movie. Like then it's really Thanos' movie. And at the end of the day, he is the one who wins it's, that movie. It's true. And and this is like such a good example and, and why I like Infinity War more than spoilers Endgame. But it's like, Endgame Thanos is your classic villain. You've seen that villain a million times before. Every movie you've ever seen is Endgame villain, or uh, Endgame Thanos. Yeah. It's like, he's someone who wants the heroes to lose. And, but like, that's just, it's so not the case. Like, not that I agree with Thanos, but like, he is compelling because you know, even like his big throne room, like there's a scene where he's just like sitting on like steps with Gamora and talking to her. And it's like, the way that they even visually framed that. And it's like the fact that he's not sitting on this like throne. Right. You know, or like in this extravagant ballroom with gems and rubies and mm -hmm. encrusted somethings. Right. Um, it's like, it's just a dark, big chamber. Right. And he's just there. And it's like, in, in I, I, I think I buy it. Like, I think that I don't, that he's not, he thinks he's right. You right. know? That's the thing. Like. And he thinks he's right about something he's very wrong about. <laughs> yes, but he, but he also thinks he's right and he's backing it with some kind of convoluted morals yeah. is the other. So it's it's a good way to approach the character and to have him be like the big bad. And I just love it. I love Infinity War. And I didn't know what was gonna happen at the end. And I walked out of the theater shell-shocked. Like, what? And I've loved it. I've just, I've always loved it. Oh, it's good. Um, it's very good. So okay, okay. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta step away from things I love so much. Otherwise, I'm just gonna gush to death. How do you feel about Iron Man three? Okay, I think I know where that's going. I think I know yeah. where that's going. It's gonna go on adorable for me. You went straight to adorable. I thought I was on the line. I'll, I went for Iron Man. I'll, I'll upgrade it. To I'll Iron say Man. it's not. It's not Thor Dark World. I'm gonna put Iron Man two just while we're knocking stuff out. I would put that adorable. I think put I that adorable. I think I prefer Iron Man three to Iron Man two. Um. Because I like the little kid in Iron Man three. I'm gonna I'm gonna agree with you on that. Like I'm trying to remember Iron Man two, and like I don't really remember a whole lot of it. Yeah, it's, it's just sort of like ah, uh, they introduced Black Widow. That was good. That was good. And uh, they have Whiplash. Tony gets drunk in the suit. Yeah, that always makes me sad. Yeah, yeah. Now, I feel like they just like they had the they had the two of them do like the thing where they match the beams together and they like take out the whole room or something. And it's like, oh, they're just gonna do that at the end. And sure enough, it's like, that's what they do at the end. Like, okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's and not very predictable. It's it's funny. Cause it's like, I love again, in the same way that I can gush about, um, you know, Steve Rogers and Cap, like I, I love Tony and Iron Man, uh, but it's weird how Iron Man one is like in my <coughs> tops and two and three are in my bottoms. Yeah. It's just, it's just like, I think he does so much better with the ensemble. He, a, he's a leader. And if he's the only person, then he doesn't get to be a leader. Mm -hmm. You know, he's just, he's just the hero. He's just the hero. So. All right. Well, talking about Cap, let's go back to Civil War then. Okay, let's do Civil War. Let's do it. Ready? Oh, oh. now I'm like, wow, where do I put it? Where do I put it? Oh gosh. And I'm like really wavering on the edge. Lay it on me. Because I'm wavering, that makes it feel like if it was obvious, it would be the top. And since I'm wavering, I'm putting it at Loki awesome. Okay, okay. Yeah. I would say I I felt the same way, but confident enough to put it into Marvelous. Okay, um, all right. I really, really, really love Stephen Tony fighting at the end. Yeah, um, Stephen Tony fight. I love the airport scene with like the, the big giant group fight. Yes, 
The other thing that I really like about Civil War is the way that they really, really address the ramifications of all of the damage that is happening to the planet Earth. Mm -hmm. Because you're talking, like, so much of this is in reaction to the events of Ultron. Oh, let me tell you what I don't like about that. Like, they do address all the problems, but, like, Thunderbolt Ross is in there. He's like, look at this problem. Hmm? Look at this. Look at this. And, like, they're all just sitting there like... It's our fault. And I'm like, why doesn't anyone speak up and be like, yeah, but if we didn't do that, Ultron was going to drop that and destroy the whole planet. Yes. Like, it's no one speaks up and says, like, the obvious comebacks. Yeah. And, uh, that Ul bothers me. Ultron's existence basically made for a lose-lose situation. It was yeah. like, it's not good that this happened. It was, at this point, it was, it was resolving something bad that already happened. Yeah. And it's like, we, we have to, there's something that has to happen here. You have mm -hmm. to solve it. But I, I think it's cool because so many of these movies involve, um, uh, and, and Spider-Man Homecoming does the same thing too, where you start to see the cleanup after the Battle of New York. Yeah. And it's sort of like all of these buildings that get wrecked, all of the damage that it, that you know has, has happened. It's like, you're getting at the very least to see it not just be like swept under the rug. Right. And and I do think that the debate between these two, between Tony and um, Steve, is a is a it's a good ethical argument. Right. Because you know I what I've always said is that like I am Team Steve as long as it's Steve, but the moment it's not Steve, I'm Team Tony, because the whole argument for for Tony is like we have to be kept in check. And he is responding from having been a weapons manufacturer, right, and being held responsible for everything that happened with that. Um, and so he's like, he's he is voting for the right thing to do. And what Steve is saying is like, if someone needs help, we have to help. And it's just like, it's a fine line. It's, it's, it's a very, very fine line. It's like, you're because, both right, but yeah. they both can't exist. Right, so there's that. Okay, we're into our final five. Oh boy. Okay, I can place Guardians 2, I think pretty easily. You think so? Yes. Boom. I did it. Mm. I'm right. I'm going Incredible Hulk. Okay. Did you go Iron Man? I did. Okay. I was thinking about it and I was looking at my other ones in Iron Man. And I'm like, no, I enjoyed it more than these. So I moved it up. But I feel <laughs> like I enjoy it the same amount that I enjoy my other ones in Iron Man. Um, but I. Like Guardians One is so surprising. It's like talk about characters you probably had never heard of prior to the movie. It it does such a good job of of doing all of that. And I I just don't really think back about Guardians Two all that much at all. I don't think a ton about it, which is why I didn't put it like up in like Loki Awesome or anything. But I do like that a lot of the movie is driven forward by like very specific. Like they're not they're not trying to like crossover a ton it's like these these are the two characters that are going to be together for this movie and this is the relationship they're going to focus on so it's like peter and his dad and it's like rocket and yondu and it's gamora and nebula and they like pair off everyone sure. really nicely and like i always really like uh specifically the scene with like gamora and nebula where they're like in the ship yeah i think i think the relationship between gamora and nebula really is the sh the strong point here I don't. I don't feel like I. I got emotional with Peter and Ego. Mm, yeah, not a ton. Not a ton. All. And it's just so obvious that he's the bad guy from so early on. And it's just like it's. Eh, I under, It's like interesting learning about Peter's past, but it's like the relationship feels so hollow the entire time. Yeah. 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 Also, I really like. Um, oh, who is his actor? From he's in he's in Miracle. Oh yeah. As the Kurt. coach, her. Oh yeah, he's Herb Brooks. Yeah, in Miracle the movie, and so it's just hard for me to see him be anybody else. I just want you to. I want just you to be coach of that hockey team. Coach man. hockey, coach hockey as much as you possibly can. Okay. All right. Moving on. Let's see here. We've got we've got some. We have to end on Endgame, I think. Okay. Uh, let's do Thor next. Let's okay. place Thor. Okay. I think this feels pretty easy to me. Yeah. Yeah, I got it in Incredible Hulk. Oh, you went much higher than me. I actually put it in Thorville. <laughs> it went Thorville? Just straight, no just, good. Just straight. I'm sorry. <clears throat> I'm sorry, Thor. It's not. I feel bad because it's interesting how it's very similar. Ragnarok in my tops and then Thor and Thor Dark World in my bottoms. Yeah. Um, 
I think that the villain in Thor 1 is just like, what? Yeah, like, I think I, I'm going to move it down to meh. Yeah, it's like As he's kind of got this. I'm like, looking at my other Credible Hulk because I'm like, I would rather watch all of those than Thor. Okay. So, okay. yeah, that's where I'm at. I'm excited for Natalie Portman's future, but, and I also love Darcy in WandaVision. Oh, yeah. But both of those characters in both of the first Thor movies, I was sort of like, like Darcy, I sort of felt like was a one note wonder. Like she sort of had like her, you sure about that? Like, yeah, like mentality. She's there to ask the questions the audience is She's asking. Like, yeah, is asking. Which made way more sense in WandaVision. I yeah. think she did a great job of it. And it like, you know, she just, just pure befuddlement. But I think he, for whatever reason, I also think like it just, the Natalie Portman casting surprised me. Well, we'll see how she does in Love and Thunder. I think she's gonna crush it. Yeah, I have same. all the faith. I have all the faith. I'm so excited do I. for it. Okay, so that leaves us with Ant-Man, Spider-Man Homecoming, mm -hmm. and Avengers Endgame. Let's yep. do Ant-Man first. I'm gonna throw Ant-Man up in Credible Hulk. Ooh. That's where I'm at with it. I, I know a lot of people love Ant-Man and celebrate it as like one of their favorites. And it's like, I, I do like it and I see where they're coming from. But when I, again, I'm looking at the other movies up there and I'm like, would I rather watch them or this? And it's them, so. It's a fair way to put it. <clears throat> it's a fair way to put it. And I, I was, I would have put Loki awesome. And then you sort of like pushed me down into Credible Hulk in the process of me about to place it. <laughs> one thing I love is Luis. Oh um, yes, he's a very good character. He's, it's so funny. Yeah. I do love, I mean, I love Paul Rudd as as Scott Lang, and I think he does a great job. And I love all the, it's a very funny movie. I love like the Baskin Robbins always knows. Yes, <laughs> yes. It's like for product placements, that's really nobody's good. done it better. Yeah, nobody's that was done very it better. good. Not that I actually went to Baskin Robbins already. But. No, that's true. Yeah, I, I don't know what it actually did for their sales, but it was <clears throat> the way that they included it was very funny. Yeah. Um, I also think the relationship between um, like Scott's daughter, the stepdad, and him, mm. all, I, I think it's actually pretty well done. Yeah. Because like, it's very easy to make a stepdad in, in these movies out, like in these movies out to be like the, like the evil bad guy. And he's, he's really not. Right. Like, you know, he, he really is just like looking out for this little girl. Right. And it's like, I, I think from his position being like, you know, in this law enforcement world and knowing that like Scott had like been to prison and stuff, it's, it's, it's like you get it. You get it. Yeah. Like, and, and I think you, if you were to really challenge yourself to be in that same position, you'd probably have a similar amount of skepticism about the situation. Right. But in the end, I think what they discover and the cool bit is just like, they both care for this person. Right. And it's like, and it's like, he's not trying to interrupt the relationship between like, right. The like mother really and the looking out for the daughter means like not like, means letting that relationship exist for her. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. So I think that their their kinship at the end is something that feels very special and very real. Yeah. Um, so that's cool. Um, okay. Spider-Man Spider Homecoming. Homecoming. I'm going to throw that up here. And Loki Awesome. Yeah. 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 I'm Look at that. Down. So both Spider-Man movies so far, top tier, top tier. Spider-Man, the spy, the after um, No Way Home comes out, Spider-Man has a very real opportunity to be the best uh, Marvel trilogy out it's there. Because I think so far it's pretty agreed upon that the Captain America trilogy as a whole is the best one of like well, a single character. Because you get, yeah, that yeah. makes sense. The first Avenger, Winter Soldier, and Civil War. Yeah, those are all heavy yeah. hitters. It's like that. no one's like, uh, yeah. excuse me, Thor and Dark World and Ragnarok. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I, I also like, I like Spider-Man Homecoming. I like the relationship with Tony. I like, I, I like how he's just a high school student. They skip the entire, like, so you got bit by a radioactive spider? Yeah. <laughs> like, yep, that's it. <laughs> that's it. Okay. Well, Ben, that just leaves us with Endgame. Well, do you know where yours is gonna go? I think it has to go. Yeah. It has to go where it goes. Yeah. It's, I, I put it in Marvelous. I put it in Marvelous. It, I mean, it is. Endgame is my favorite Marvel movie, so it is definitely uh, number one on my whole list. I, see, I know you're an Infinity War person. I am an Infinity War sure. person. I would put Infinity War first. I think out of these, I'd probably put Ragnarok first uh, and maybe Black Panther first. Well, let me just say, the, the theater going experience for Endgame was like none, none other I've ever been to. And we had the, the real joy of almost getting to experience it uh, twice 
in that capacity. Because obviously we went on like opening night. We did. We did. And you know, when Cap pulls the hammer and you know, uppercuts Thanos with it. It's like the whole theater is just like, cheering yes. like cheering it's like that that just does not happen in movie theaters and like there were just so many moments like that and then we also did a meetup around it and it was the exact same like feeling and enthusiasm and it was you know all these all these little payoffs to like the avengers assemble or on your left or and there's all these little touches they just hit just right or like activate instant kill and you're like oh i remember that right right and so that's the thing is that i feel like once they're there you really can't compete with Endgame. Yeah. Like, I, I think what drags Endgame down for me a little bit, I mean, it's still one of my favorite movies, but is just the fact that the rest of it, to me, is less compelling. Like, you know, Cap going back and fighting himself and mm -hmm. like those bits, it's like they, like, they are funny, but like even Tony going back and like talking to his dad, like during that period of time and like sort of like consoling him, like when he himself was like about to be born and stuff, it's just sort of like, it's not even as emotional as I think it could have been. And on top of that, it was time travel, which I think this is one where speculation ruined it for me because a little bit, a little bit. And again, <clears throat> stole my tops, but I just so, I was like, when I was, when we were coming up with theories for this, it was like, because it's not time travel, what does it have to be? And, right. and like, that was the way I was thinking. I was like, they're not gonna do time not travel. Gonna do time they're travel. not gonna do time travel because that would be silly. And then it's like, oh, a Mobius strip, time travel. And it's like, no, no. Uh, yeah, they did it. Mobius is like not even a good techno babble word. It's like everybody who's like used a piece of paper in third grade knows what it's a like, Mobius strip it's like is. It's like a great name for an Owen Wilson character. It is, and Mobius the character is great. Which surprised me. I Marvelous never, tier for I would put Mobius I would, the character. Mobius the character. <laughs> Goodness me. Yeah, I mean, but you're right. I mean, you've got on your left, you got the like, oh, I knew it. Yeah. Like, oh, oh, the I knew it moment. It's like what makes that's it better. so good. Cause that's it's so good. Cause when you see Cap nudge the hammer in Ultron, the look in Thor's face appears to be jealousy. But then he come up to Endgame and he pulls the hammer and his face is like, not just joy, but like, Pure elation. For his friend. For yeah. his friend. Yeah. Like, oh, I like, love it. And and that I think is an undersold piece it of is. like emotional heartstring yes. moments is is having a moment where you get to see somebody be happy for someone else in such a genuine way. Yeah, because like they could have very easily made that line be like, unbelievable. Or like, no way. Right, right, you right. Know? And but, but instead it's not. That, yeah. it's not. It's just joy and support and i love that moment so much plus you have i am iron man yeah oh and i am iron man oh just all the way back to the very beginning uh it was very good it's how it's how he started it and it's how he ended it it's, <laughs> it's pretty good pretty good anyway guys i think we're there we are there i'm pretty proud of my orientation look at this because i've got i've got like a, what yeah you this is pretty solid yeah, yeah. Mine, it's like a, it trends positive yeah yeah, yeah. I am, I am, again, I expected this more critical of things than you. Oh, but um, I only have one, I don't even know. How does it forget? Yeah. That's well, I, I have, I have in the bottom two tiers, at least. Oh, you have, yeah, two more eight movies. movies in the yeah. bottom tiers. Um, I only have six. I'm so curious to see, was there, was there something in particular that you were just like, I can never speak to you guys again because you just put one of my favorite movies, like, you know, lower than we anticipated. Uh, I want all of your hot takes, all of your feelings, all of your thoughts. Is there anything you disagreed with about what whatever we did? Or if you want to share uh, this again with your friends, there's a link in the description down below. And you can uh, you should be able to save your entire tier list and just share it with us over on uh, Twitter at John Kerlin and at SCB underscore Ben underscore. <laughs> yeah, it's hilarious that it's in there. We're also on Instagram as a joint entity, finally, as at Carlin Brothers, if you'd like to follow us there. Thank you for sticking around this long. You guys are the best. Let us know how wrong we were about all of our opinions in the towel section down below. Guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If you wanna see us face off in a J versus Ben where we try and guess who said it from various Marvel movies around the MCU, you can check out this video right here. Or if you would like to see just our entire Marvel playlist, you can check out this video right here. But otherwise, until next time, bye. bye.